and you've been um, and you've been doing that. You know, I mean, yeah. that's, that was one of the things I had written down to talk to you about with in your uh, in your newsletter pep talks that yeah. it was just like you know you had Project Saffron going, Toaster, Tagalong, this new yeah. uh, Project Samaritan. You're still out yeah. there in different stages of the yeah. process that that regardless of what's going on with the world coming to a halt, you're still at least moving forward. Yeah, you know, I mean, and 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 that's the thing is that like you know, I, this, this kind of comes from, from my background as, 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 as an editor and, and as, um, you know, having, you know, when you're an indie comics creator, you have all year. Um, I, I, uh, I feel like there's very little that beats having a good con, um, and just meeting readers and getting to, to introduce them to fun new stories. And so, yeah, you know, that's something that like, I'm going to be committed to doing um you know for the long term and i've said and this i think comes from you know my first book being a parody of calvin and Hobbes. that that i can tell you i got rejected left right and center for that book and all it did was fill me with spite <laughs> you know i was going to put that if book anything, out. that's more determination to, you know to, to yeah. get it out there and, and and that's become kind of the theme of my career at this point is that like yeah. if i like a book enough to pursue it to the script and art stage i'm gonna push that book. I mean, you know, even if, even if the direct market collapsed tomorrow, I'd be on Kickstarter the next day. Sure. Um, I, 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 uh, the, 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 the art form's not going anywhere. That's is, right. is, is what I'm saying. But, um, and I've been really fortunate as well that I've been, I've been asked to do a few uh, charity anthologies as well. Okay. Um, so I'm working on a couple of projects, uh, just very short stories for those, but it's been a nice way to not just kind of flex my muscles a little bit, but, um, you know, at risk of sounding self-indulgent, it's almost a little therapeutic. Um, you know, being able to, I think anthology stories more than, even more than um, creator-owned stories, they're a way for you to really um, put your own personal stamp on something. Um, you know, more, you know, a little more expressive, a little more personal. Yeah, you don't have the room to um to do anything else you know i mean for for example um what can i say without spoiling the anthology um all all i'll say is there was an anthology that had a specific theme and i was told two pages okay well you know i spent I, i i spent a week just banging my head against a wall saying like well what am I going to do in two pages that fits this theme you know and I kept thinking how do I fit the theme how do I fit the theme how do I fit the theme um and then it kind of hit me that I was like oh well what if I just you know what if I just did two pages that were very me that had a little something to do with this theme and then I like just kind of like busted out a script in 30 minutes Right. Um, oh, your, yeah, and, your approach would definitely have to be different than yeah, and it's, like it's, a Spencer and Locke that you can go over yeah, four issues and you, you can't get as wrapped up in oh this is the concept and this is where the concept would go because you only have a page or two to make it work right. um, and so I uh, you know there's another page or another uh, anthology that I that I was asked to work on that I that I showed a little tease on in in my last newsletter. I was given one page. Right. And it's like, what do you do in one page? And it wound up becoming um, a very kind of slice of life confessional, you know, of sort of how I've been feeling during, dur- during, during quarantine and lockdown. Okay. Like a self-reflection a kind bit, of a... Yeah. You know, I, and, and while I feel like, I feel like most of my books have some ele- some confessional element to them um you know i think that becomes much more pronounced the 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 lower the smaller the real estate um you know at that point it becomes all about the character for me um and the character has to be the high concept it can't be you know it can't be oh every man finds himself in this crazy situation because you don't have time to build it out it has to be you know it has to be the character Um, right right i guess it's a a good lesson that I, I probably should be using on all of my scripts. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a good way, I think, not only to stay busy, but to 
feel like I'm doing something in all okay. this. Um, you know, because like I said, it's so easy for it to turn into noise. Um, you know, especially I think the comics industry, we're so used to going it on our own. You know, I mean, every creator's got to be their own pitch man. Um, and every publisher, you know, they, they have nobody else to turn to, you know, so they got to they got to do it all themselves. Right. And, um, and so, yeah, I've been I've been really grateful um, to, to have been asked to do a few um, anthologies. And I've said I've said it publicly and I'll, I'll say it here as well. You know, um, if anybody's doing, uh, you know, a charity anthology, I'm happy to throw in. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think the best part also about charity anthologies is, um, it, it, it suddenly becomes a project that I'm not worried about the overhead. Um, you know, but yeah, you play a different role. You play, not only do I play a different role and not only is the editorial process easier because it's so much shorter, but like, I'm, I'm also not, I'm not worried about what's everybody's page rate. Can I afford this? It's for charity. So nobody's getting paid for this. Um, and so it's very, it's, it's a lot easier to say, you know, Hey, we're doing this thing for charity. It's benefiting X, Y, Z. Um, it's only a couple of pages. Right. Are you interested and available to throw in? No harm, no foul if you can. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm sort of taking this time as best I can to just churn out more material. Um, right, right. and, uh, you know, I mean, there are certain days that are easier than others. Um, I sort of, I took a good chunk of this week to kind of recharge my batteries. I had written two scripts back to back, um, two, two issue scripts back to back. Um, yeah. and I'm sort of, I'm waiting for notes on one for project tag along and project saffron. I'm trying to write it as far ahead of, as fast as I can to make sure that I don't need to correct anything earlier. <laughs> it's, okay. it's it, in perfect science for editorial, uh, for sure. But, um, you know, and, and then just thinking, you know, kind of noodling in my head about, you know, other projects that, that, that I want to work on after this, um, you know, we're sort of slowly chiseling away, for example, on Spencer and Long Volume 3. Okay. Um, you know, both both Jorge Santiago Jr. and myself, we, we both have other projects that we're juggling, and we want to make sure that when this thing, this thing gets knocked out the best way it possibly can. Right. The timing's um, right, you guys. The timing's right, and that just, that the story has to be right. Um, sure. And, you know, it's, this is a much more challenging story um than than any of the first volumes and so it's you know it's it's uh it's really challenging us all to step up our game and so you know i promise good things come to those who wait um you know this this will be a satisfying conclusion but yeah it's just um um you know just keeping busy uh, sure. as best you can during during the crisis and, well and um, you're definitely doing that i mean you uh like we were, you were talking a little bit earlier about the the hashtag creators for comics. Yeah, I know you're involved in that, and with yeah. the proceeds going to the uh, book industry charitable foundation, which yep. a number of creators are doing. Not only yep. are you doing it with some of your trades, I know you're yes. doing uh your artist, your cover artist is doing what issue three of going to the chapels. Yeah, so we've got we got a bunch going uh, going on right now for for creators for comics. I was really fortunate that I was one of the uh, the the initial group of uh, of uh, 120 creators that were enlisted. Um, but it's open to any comics creators. Uh, I think they're doing it through Monday. But uh, it's basically I, it's, I've seen everyone put April 20th, you know, as the end date. People are uh, basically it's 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 a Twitter hashtag that's also a charitable auction. So I'm actually doing three different uh, auctions right now. I'm doing um, okay. a, uh, I'm doing a, a a live, whether it's Skype or Zoom or email, whatever you'd like, uh, critique of any comics pitch. Um, you know, and I did like, I did see I did see post that yes. Um, and you know, I mean, I I, you know, with with, with the with the proviso, you know, you'll you'll have to sign a waiver uh, before you, you send it to me, basically saying that if I'm working on anything similar, you're not going to sue me. Right. But, um, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I've, I've gotten, uh, not only, you know, do I, am I a Ringo Award nominated writer, but um, I, 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 I've, I've worked for over a decade uh, as, as a reviewer. 
So I I know kind of both sides of how you know people are going to look at this stuff. So um, so I'm doing that. And, I'm also and you're still uh, dealing with pitches and, and submissions yeah. right now yourself, and you, you yeah you, you're exactly so the feedback I'm, from I'm better at, yeah um we've I'm I'm uh, I'm auctioning for my second lot um I'm do I'm doing signed trades uh all, you know both volumes of Spencer and Locke and going to the chapel. And then uh, my third and final uh, auction is I'm actually auctioning off the first issue scripts, uh, either for Spencer and Locke, volume one, or going to the chapel. Okay. And I will also send you the uh, pitch document that I, that I sent Action Lab to get those books approved. Okay. So um, right now, I think the bids on both, I think, are 75 right now. Okay. Uh, for, for the first and third lot. Um, and minimum bid for lot two is $40. But yeah, uh, you know, basically the way that it works is, um, you know, you'll you'll bid on each lot on Twitter um, with your with your bid. Uh, you will donate directly to to the and the, and by and and before we get too far into that, by yeah. bidding, they're commenting on yes. that post. Yes. Or that tweet. Yes, you're gonna you're gonna That's comment where the bids on are that tweet. Be. So, um, for example, looking at it that we we got right now. Um, you know, I see somebody that's saying, you know, $50 for lot three. Um, and so what you'll do is you will then donate directly to the book industry charitable foundation, and you will send me proof that you've done so you'll send me a screen grab. Um, you know, you'll send me, uh, you know, your an email receipt, what, you know, what have you. Right. And then, you know, we'll deliver the goods. And, um, you know, we talked a lot about how, you know, what can individual creators do to help? The situation and i think this is this is it um you know i i think uh there are a lot of retailers who you know they're 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 able to apply for various uh grants but you know they're drying up faster than they can find them. Uh, small business loans are being tapped my parents got screwed right. on that one uh yep. right. it's you know, even banks are still trying to figure out what's going on you know so yeah it's still yeah. and it, and you know, I mean, it's it's one of those things that like I'm sure some landlords are are being okay with deferred payments, but I'm sure there are a lot more that aren't. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I see their creators like Jim Lee, for example. Jim Lee has already gotten uh, over six figures in donations uh, for for creators for comics. Um, you know, you, you've got uh, you know, I saw like Gail Simone uh, got the uh, the martial arts expert who. Um, was the the who who did all the performance for the animated Mulan? She, Gail Simone, somehow got her to do uh, a personalized martial arts instruction. Wow! Uh, for, okay. For people. Chip Sadarsky has offered to uh, write a short erotic story starring you that he will then read to you over Zoom. Okay. Um, so you know, I you've got all sorts of stuff um, going on over there, and. Um, Scott Snyder, I saw, is offering uh, an online course on how to write first issues. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, in that regard, I think creators are really pulling out the stops. And I think that's great. Um, you know, I, definitely, I think definitely. It's, it's a small way to give back. Um, and I think it's a way, the, it's a way to do so in a way that's low impact for the creator. Because, look, I mean, a lot of creators are living paycheck to paycheck right now, too. Sure. They've got their own stuff to worry about, but it's their way to sort of give back creative capital in in a way that's not going to be an undue financial burden on on creators. Right. So um, I think it's it's really cool. I was really honored um, when 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 Cami uh, Garcia reached out to me about this. Yeah. Um, and it's just really exciting to see how much the rest of the comics industry has jumped in on it. So um, I think it's uh, and and also the response from the fans that you see that yeah. you know that they're waiting through all this. They they have that uncertainty when they're going to get stuff again, but they yeah. still want to. You know, maybe money they would have spent at Emerald City or at yeah. WonderCon. You know, they can, you know, at least still can, be a part can, of something. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and you know, I think it's, I think it's a good thing. I think it's, it's, it's a way. It's also just something focusing for for creators. I mean, I, I'll admit that, um, you know, last week they announced um, that nominations were open for the Ringo Awards, and. Yeah. 
you know, uh, on, on the one hand, uh, you know, of course I want to push, you know, my books, uh, going to the chapel, uh, and Spencer and Locke too is, you know, for, for, for those. And yeah, both, at the both became, el are, both are eligible for this year's both award. Both are eligible for, for, for the Ringo Awards in, uh, just about every category you can think of. Um, but on the mm -hmm. other hand, it felt weird promoting it. Um, you know, like, it, it, especially when, you don't know if there's going to be a Ringo Award ceremony at this point. You know? Well, like, yeah. I mean, do you do it with a shortened season? Is is that, would that be considered? You know, I, I don't, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, I, I know, for example, the Eisners are announced, are, are going to do the Eisner Awards digitally this year since San Diego, they just announced is, is canceled for the year. Right. Right. That was, um, that was a bummer. But it, 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 it is it is a weird thing and i i have certainly felt weird about the idea of promoting anything um during this crisis like nobody wants to hear you promoting stuff you know it's uh i, I i'm i'm I, I am grateful that i don't have anything besides that to promote you know right. Uh, right now i mean it's like it's like my books are already out i don't have to worry about pushing that when people have to worry about paying their bills you know sure uh, I don't I, think I, I don't think people really mind the promoting so much. I think a lot of people, collectors, fans, they understand that a good deal of revenue for comic creators is these yeah. conventions. You're going yeah. show to show. You're selling these. You know, I mean, I, I hear about good shows and bad shows. I talk to creators that you know, I I've heard you have some just monster shows and like this was my best <laughs> one I've ever. You know, and that's yeah. that's so exciting. And then to just have that cut yeah. off that i it's, think that they understand that you know online virtual events you know similar to the mainframe comic-con which we'll touch on in a second here yeah um yeah i mean it's 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 doing doing what you can and figuring out that line you know with what's what's appropriate given 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 the certain the the today's situations i mean something that you know to touch upon what we discussed earlier because i don't want to sound unfair to, to you know saying oh well you know retailers need to do what they can to build up their online presence um this yeah. is also something incumbent upon creators as well i mean i it, i actually had hired a web developer to uh, build up my website and okay. uh, before everything uh, uh blew up and uh, I've been like chomping in the bit to get the, the site live. Uh, I just yeah. talked to my web developer, um, I think two nights ago about it. Cause I was like, well, you know, when we first talked about this, I said, well, I guess we'll wait on the web sh store, you know, cause I don't know what my bandwidth is going to be. And since then the gears have obviously, I said, well, there's no pussyfooting around this anymore. Like you, like I, I need to be able to sell stuff right. online. So whatever it's going to take to get that, happening let's do it sure so i um yeah i i uh you know i think i think it's it's a big wake-up call uh, uh for for a lot of people and you know you got to figure out how to adapt in in this um you know sure. every and, and and i think the big thing is that no one really could have predicted that things would get so serious where people so serious aren't fast aren't leaving they're not allowed to leave your house that you couldn't have prepared for I better have a digital storefront for a backup. Uh, right. But but now you're immediately faced with that. Oh crap. Yep. You know. That so this is happening. the time to at least do it. This is the time, and and you know, as I've been really fortunate. You know, I I uh, I we've only we've only had one false alarm COVID case in 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 terms of my immediate family you know um okay. you know the people i've i've been really fortunate that that you know my parents are healthy um right. you know in missouri um uh, my sister lives in in brooklyn she's been healthy oh, okay um, good. you know uh you know uh one of my brothers had a false a false alarm with it uh, but i've been really fortunate and so um you know by virtue of saying that i've been really fortunate I am choosing to look at this as it's it's a painful gift of time. And so this is sort of, you know, I'm using this time to bank up scripts. I'm using this time to figure out like, what's my long-term plan here? You know, what's my, my business plan? Because sure. I thought at the time I had been thinking, you know, I'd been thinking in terms of cons, you know, and 
now it is a sharp reminder that oh cons may be in flux for right. a while so and that's what this this has really been that this has been that reality check for people in whatever area of their life they really need to focus on and, and address that maybe they put off for years uh or yeah. just you know it never seemed as urgent and, and now is definitely the time to, to jump on that yeah i mean this is yeah that exactly like this is this is a this is a, 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 a slap of reality. It's a cold dose of perspective. Um, and I feel like, you know, this is, that's why, and I think this is sort of, this is informs my philosophy about what's going on with DC and with Diamond and everything else is um, recognizing there are certain things within your sphere of influence, as my therapist would say. Okay. Um, and, uh, and recognizing what you can affect and what you can't and saying, okay, I can affect that I'm healthy. I can affect, or, you know, that I, that I'm not going out in public, you know, to places that I would get sick. Right. I can control, am I working on a script right now? Yes, I can work on a script. Even if there's no artist attached, I can work on a script and I can think, okay, what can I do for when things open up again? Because I don't believe that, you know, we're not going to be on pause forever. And no, I no. think if anything, if anything, once the pause button gets hit, gets undone, things, it's going to feel like whiplash. It, 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 and so I want to hit the ground running. I want to be prepared for when business starts up again. Um, and so, you know, for me, I sort of, you know, I'm pacing myself as best I can and just trying to get scripts out. And then, right. you know, beyond that, just, you know, do what I can. Right. Yeah. No. Well, and you're, it's, it's a great attitude to have, man, you know, and, and I really commend you on everything that you're still doing in all this time. Uh, like with next weekend's mainframe Comic-Con, the two day yeah. virtual event, uh, the 25th and 26th. And man, I was just looking at the list of people, uh, Kevin Smith and Clark Gregg and, Seth Green, yeah. uh, Natalie Emanuel from Game of Thrones, but then creators like Donnie Cates, who we mentioned earlier, Joe Hill, Tim Seeley, yeah. uh, just uh, everyone's really coming together for this uh, two-day virtual event. Yeah. Uh, in in situations similar to this, where it's it's Zoom and Skype and and uh, people uh, coming around around the world really to converge on this thing. It's pretty impressive. Um, you know, I, uh, I'm actually, I'm going to be on a panel uh, with my friend Rylan Grant. Um, they're, we're doing. Um, uh, the name, a, the name it, rings a bell. Yeah, you know, that guy. Um, and so uh, uh, we're, we're, we're doing a panel um, uh, about publishing uh, from the writer's perspective. It's going to be okay. at uh, 9 p.m. Central Time uh, on Saturday, the 25th. 9 and uh, yeah central time uh yes 9 p.m 9 p.m central okay um so that'll be uh that'll be uh seven oh, o'clock is, is this, is, this is coming out of like the chicago area or something isn't it yeah it's coming yeah. out of the chicago area but they are actually uh from what from what i've been told they're doing it's not quite a 48 hour live stream because okay. it's something for google's algorithm so they're having like small breaks in the middle but okay. yeah we're doing they're basically doing panels continuously more or less that entire weekend uh, right. it's going to be an actual sort of convention going on so yeah so i'll be joining uh, i'll be joining uh, you know rylan grant i'll be work uh uh, uh frank gogol um okay. sean lewis and david boer i don't know if i was supposed to announce that but um uh, as, as far as i know they'll all still be on the uh, on the panel um and yeah i mean it's it it was like so many of these things, you know, it's, it, I'm grateful that I was asked. Um, because yeah, it's just like, like you were saying, I feel most at home at a con. That's sort of where I feel. I spend all my time writing and feeling completely not confident about it. But once the art comes in and, and it's printed, right. I, I feel very confident about it. And um, talking with strangers about it makes me and, feel great. And, and that's, that's what I was going to touch on that sales shows interest and and but when you actually get to the convention you're seeing people who you know love the genre love the format and love the stories and you yeah. know you're you, that, that's your first time to really connect with fans yes yes and i feel like for me i 
I, that I basically, I'm a sprinter when it comes to being social, where I like, I like to have, that's, and that's why I think I work well at cons, is I have three or four days where I'm just like talking with as many people as I, as I want. Sure. And then I go home and I'm like, I don't want to see anybody for a month. <laughs> um, and the problem is, is, you know, I, I, most of my convention schedule for the year has just been decimated. Um, right. I've, I've had exactly two conventions before everything happened this year. And I want to say that yeah, Long San Beach, San you did Long, San Beach. Long Beach and C2E2, but okay. I, I lost out on Emerald City, uh, WonderCon, right. um, uh, uh, Comic Palooza in Houston. Planet Comic Con in Kansas City. Um, that's been rescheduled, although I don't. I, I feel a little skeptical that that's going to happen in August at this rate. Right, right. Um, yeah, August isn't looking so good, especially. Yeah, you know, um, San Diego obviously just got canceled. Right. Um, and uh, uh, Denver just got. Uh, I mean, it got pushed to Thanksgiving, which I can't make, so I, I, that that's off the list for me this year. MegaCon uh, is off this year. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a little, it's, you know, I, I miss fans. I miss getting to chat with people. Sure. And so, um, I'm, I'm excited to do this con. I'm ex I mean, uh, the fact that it's kind of blown up as big as it has, the fact that Kevin Smith's involved, um, it's huge. You know, I mean, it's, 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 um, so it's, it's very exciting. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure what to expect. Um, but right. you know, I feel like, at this point, you know, angsting over results feels counterproductive because, like I said, there's only so much you can control. Uh, sure. It's it's just going out there and doing things, and you know, if if you if 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 you go out there and you do the work that you feel proud of, like that's really all that matters. That, that is all day. that matters. That is all that matters. Um, and uh, yeah, I think you know. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited. To, to 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 do a panel. I didn't think I was going to get to do a panel this year. Okay. Um, cool. And uh, so yeah, I'm I'm excited. So mainframe Comic Con, it's going to be next weekend. Um, and like I said, 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific. 9 p.m. Pacific. Uh, or, the, nine, or 7 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Central. Yeah. Uh, uh, on Saturday the 25th is uh, gotcha. I'll be there with uh, Rylan Grant, uh, Sean Lewis, um, Frank Gogol, and David Boer. Yeah, um, all, all indie all guys, of, all a bunch of I, uh, IDW uh, and, uh, and Source Point Press, and yeah, Aftershock. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, it's uh, it's really cool. It's very it's very exciting. I I said this um, I said this the day after Diamond froze everything because there okay. was I'm telling you the 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 uncertainty that just shot through the industry the moment the Diamond shut everything down was just like. I've, I'd never seen anything like it in my life. Yeah. And I said, and I think a lot of people seem to really respond to this, is the number one element of success in the comics industry, I, I'm going to tell you, it's not your talent level. It's your, it's, it's your, your threshold for pain and your, <laughs> ability, your ability to say that I'm not going anywhere. Okay. And that's the thing. I'm not going anywhere and neither should you. Um, you know, the comics industry, there's going to be changes and there are going to be people who leave and there's going to be, and, and it's not even a shame, you know, I'm not trying to shame anybody who has to leave. I mean, I think, you know, there's a lot of financial realities that go into it. There's a lot sure. of other responsibilities that go into it. Um, but at the end of the day, the person, the, all your favorite comics creators, they were the ones who were rejected a million times. I mean, look at right. Bendis, for example. You know, Bendis got rejected upon rejected upon rejected upon rejected for years and years and years and years and years. Uh, Donny Cates, you know, uh, was was toiling away in the trenches for a long time before God Country came out. Yeah. Um, you know, that and that I, perseverance. I, it, yeah, it's 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 you know, I mean, I I. Spencer and Locke was the most valuable lesson I could have ever had as a creator because I pitched that thing all over town and was told no, 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 no. And all it took was one yes. Yeah. Um, and so that's sort of... And the fortitude did not give up. Exactly. And so I, I feel like 
things may get harder. They may stay the same. I don't know. I mean, it may be, it may be a, 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 a logarithmic curve where, you know, it, it, it may be just, it may just look impossible when you start out, no matter what, you know, what the industry is looking like. I don't know. But um, that's, that's the thing. I, I think there are a lot, there's a lot of uncertainty going on, um, right. especially with the comics industry. And just saying, I mean, my stance is no different than it was a month ago, which was no different than it was six months ago, which is no different than it was five years ago. I'm not going anywhere. Um, you know, I've tried all the stable jobs. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> this is it. Um, and, you know, I think, I think when that is absolute, um, you know, the rest of the variables will fall where they may. Sure. Um, so I think, you know, if there's, if there's anybody who's feeling a little, you know, uncertain, certain of what the future is going to look like, you know, take, take a moment, take a breath, know that, you know, the dust hasn't settled yet, but once it does, we're going to get back up. That's, uh, that's definitely good words. And you know what? Uh, it's Hollywood's going to continue looking to comic books, yeah. you know, it's original storytelling. They don't need to come up with the, the plot, you know, they, they don't even, have to come uh, up with design. Even, even a lot of, a lot of indies, you know, before you could easily see Marvel and DC go into films, but indie titles are getting snapped up for adaptations that, sure. you know, that it, it's just something so original, creative, and it's actually, it can be, it can transform well on the big or little screen. Uh, sure. But, uh, you know, it, it's just such great stories. And, like, you know, another thing with this not going away, storytelling through sequential art has been around since caveman days. You yeah. know, that, that we're, we're, you know, we're, there's something about, you know, yeah. taking in that, that, that tale like that, that I don't yeah. think will ever go away. And, you know, the thing is, is it like, might look different. Yeah. And there's still, you know, there's great forms of experimentation going on. Like I said, you know, comiXology and, and webtoons, especially with their sort of the infinite scroll layout. Mm -hmm. But, you know, going back to what we said, talked about originally is, you know, consumer habits are not going to change at the drop of a hat. Sure. And, you know, there are plenty of people who they don't want to read digitally. They, you know, they want something in their hands. And, you know, and some of that is tied to licensed properties that that's the only place that they exist in that form. I mean, right. you, you know, um, but I feel like right now you just, it, we've had a decade to prove this, that, you know, Comixology has been doing day and date for over a decade at this point, And they're only making anecdotally 10% of, of, of people's total income. There's right. no cannibalization going on here. It's, it's just different audiences. And, you know, I, so, you know, as a creator, you know, I'm definitely curious to see how it all shakes out, but at the same time, like, I'm going to keep making stuff and, you know, the, you know, the direct market didn't know who I was a couple of years ago, you know, uh, you know, the webtoons market doesn't know who I am now that could change. Sure. So, you know, but I think that's I think part of a, that's part of a, a, a necessary evolution for any creator in this industry. It all starts with the content and, and, you know, that's the thing that like, you got to remember, maybe this comes from, I used to work at CBS. Okay. And so, you know, when I was over there, people were really worried about streaming. Um, and, you know, the thing that they always said was at the end of the day, it's the content that matters. You know, we went from, you know, from basic broadcast to cable to, you know, uh, DVR to Netflix and Amazon and iTunes. And at the end of the day, you know, we adapt. The, the, right. the, the distribution platform is the least important thing out of anything here. It's, it's you know, the, 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 the thirst for content though, that's, that's constant. And that's what creators have to offer. I mean, we can't, except on a project to project basis, we're not big enough to decide what the distribution model is going to look like. Sure. Um, you know, I can choose if I have a project that I think would be better suited for say vault versus um, webtoons or comiXology. I can choose which place I pitch first, 
but sure. there's going to be some element of self-selection going on, you know, and until, until, until I hit like a Donny Cates level, you know, I mean, you know, every, every publisher turns stuff down. Um, I, uh, I'll, without, without naming too many names, there was a book, a new book that was announced fairly recently that looked amazing. And I know it looked amazing because I pitched the exact same idea to another publisher um, like six months prior. And I know, like, I mean, it was clearly the same idea, you know, idea space. Like, it's not like, I, I, I don't think anybody stole my idea. But I was just like, oh, I remember that other publisher turning me down hard. And then some other publisher saw the same idea and immediately greenlit it. Right. So, you know, it's just, that's the name of the game. You know, um, you can't, can't get wrapped up in that. But, uh, you know, publishers yeah, I, have their own direction and their, you know, yeah. their outline for their future. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like that's kind of, you know, all you can, all you can do is create at this point, um, you know, well, we're creators and that's our job. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether or not, you know, the lights are on or the doors are open, you know, we do this cause we love it and the doors will open again and our stories will come out there. And if the lights never turn on again, we'll just put them up somewhere else ourselves. I'm, I'm confident you will. David, uh, Thank you so much for taking the of time to, to speak with us at Popcorn no, HQ. Yeah. And, you know, we'll definitely, uh, you know, definitely want everyone to get on board and with uh, Pep Talks. You Thank know, you. It, it's, it's great what you do. You know, not only are you reaching out and keeping fans updated on what you're doing, but, you know, you're giving shout outs to other things, to stuff you're reading, you know, it's stuff you recommend that it's not just a self-promoting uh, newsletter. It's it's really about a, a lot of things going on in the in the, the industry as a whole, and making that uh, opening that world to some of your fans. So well, I, I appreciate it. You know, anybody who wants to sign up for Pep Talks, they can uh, they can subscribe at bitly slash news. Um, you know, uh, I send it out every two to three weeks. I try not to overload people. Um, I'll do my and quick they usually little have little. They usually have titles like Friends episodes too. Yeah, the last yeah. one was. Uh, the one with what the go awards. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so, uh, you know, Fun and if you, wanna, if you want to nominate, um, you know, going to the chapel or Spencer and Lock 2 for the Ringo Awards, you still can. Uh, voting is, I think, open until June 25th. You can just visit ringoawards.com. Um, regardless of what you vote for, going to the chapel is eligible for a few extra categories, including uh, best humor comic and favorite right. new series. So if you vote for nothing else, please vote for us in those two categories. Uh, vote for going to the chapel in those two categories, I should say. Um, but yeah, I was going to say, you know, otherwise, um, you know, just stay safe out there. You can follow me on Twitter at PeposD uh, for sort of the latest and greatest news. Um, and look for you next weekend at uh, Main Train yeah, Comic Con. Yeah, uh, awesome. yeah, April 25th at 7 p.m. Pacific. Awesome. Hey, awesome. thanks for everything you're still doing. And, and I'm glad. Uh, you and your family are, are staying healthy during this time. Thank you. So, Thank you. We appreciate uh, it. Thanks again for having me. Definitely. Thank you.